I'm going to make this really simple and direct and to the point. I know a lot of people don't like financial videos. I'm going to make this not a financial video, financial video. <laughs> For those listening to me who have a job, I want to get this information out to you and I want you to start making some decisions within the next uh, several months. Radio Shack is closing 200 stores. Walmart is laying off thousands of people. People. Uh, I, I believe somebody said maybe a million. Uh, I, I don't know, but I know it's something ridiculous. There are other national retail stores that are laying off each 200 of their stores here and there, 300 of their stores here and there, 400 of their stores here and there. That means approximately, what, 12 to 20 people per store. And now we have the relaxing of the banking requirements to purchase a new home. So we went to super conservative. You have to have 20% down. You have to show actual income for two, three years. It was hard to get. Uh, Hard to buy a house. And then Fannie and Freddie, Fannie and Freddie is now talking about completely going under again, again. And Congress just got notification that the too big to fail banks and financial institutions are again too big to fail, too big to fail, looking for a bailout. But now they are 40% larger and they're looking for a bailout. This all Republican Congress is sitting with their thumbs, sitting on their thumbs, trying to avoid even answering the question because they don't want to lose the 2016 election. You understand what I'm saying? They're going to play this politics and they're going to try and wait it out, but it's going to be too late. Now, here's the reality of a too big to fail. If they actually go into bankruptcy court, Firms that can actually purchase their assets will take their assets, divide them up, and sell the assets. Nothing is going to change. Literally, we're talking about these firms are literally just things on paper. I was buying a house, and uh, I was actually walking around a neighborhood looking for houses to buy, and there was a sign in the yard. And the tenant came up to me and said, the owner is selling this house but we think he's going to go into foreclosure if he can get the house first. And I asked him, if I buy the house, will you stay in the house? And he said, yes. So here I buy the asset, but nothing actually changes in the actual asset itself. For whatever reason, the owner probably was upside down in the house or something, or something was, something was wrong. That doesn't mean that uh, I couldn't have short sell the house and, and allow the tenant to stay there and a the tenant pays off my mortgage. For me at the time i wasn't thinking for myself i was thinking for a, a, a uh, another investor but that's how the too big to fail work on a corporation is a piece of paper literally a piece of paper the the whole building and all that other stuff that's not the corporation the corporation is the piece of paper so when romney said corporations are people too he was not only was he wrong he was damn wrong not only was he a fool he was a damn fool right isn't that the saying corporations are not buildings they're not people there are pieces of paper that has the the name and the names of the people or the officers of the, that's it that's what a corporation is that's why a corporation can move its corporate headquarters around when tax codes change and uh, things are redone, and it's better to have uh, is more better, more beneficial taxes in uh, Nevada than New Jersey, they move their corporate headquarters to New Nevada. Easy peasy. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is just sign a piece of paper. Now, so this whole too big to fail is a complete and utter lie. What happened to Lehman Brothers when they allowed them to go under? That was a new, another too big to fail. What happened? They bought the assets and divided them up and sold them. That's it. That's all that happened. All the people who still said that they were owed money were still owed money. The, the, nothing happened. Nothing even changed almost. In fact, in a lot of places, they still have the Lehman Brothers name. There is another housing bubble. There is another credit default swap bubble that is about to burst only this time the dollar is far weaker than it was before 
So what is the Federal Reserve going to do? They're going to introduce you to QE4, QE5, QE6, you know, whatever, whatever they can do. Those of you with jobs right now, and, and that's your only source of income, although if you're listening to me, you know that I've been telling you to find your own source of income, meaning your own business. And for those of you without a job, get your own business sell or how many times have i said sell oranges on the corner sell water on the corner get the whole family into it one sells orange on one corner one sells water on another corner or right next to them somebody sells donuts somebody sells candy bars making that profit is going to be far more beneficial than actually going to work i know a lot of women tell men you can't do that that is not secure well you don't need to be a slave you said richer for poor right that, that was the whole vow thing you can't be a slave all your life just because it's secure. Well, I'm going to go be a slave. That's more secure. I told you this was a non-financial financial video, right? I'll, I'll make that the topic. You can't be a slave because it's more secure. You know, the Supreme Court in the, uh, after the, uh, slaves are set free said in one of their Supreme Court cases talking about jobs said slavery is illegal. However, if a man renders himself a slave by contract, that is legal because we cannot abolish contracts. We must uphold contracts. And that is the only thing that the court was originally intended to do. This, all this other stuff, family court didn't exist. Marriage wasn't a contract. Marriage was marriage. It was something that private people did in their churches. They, they wouldn't dream of divorce court and all this other malarkey. Courts were there to uphold contracts. And if a tort came along, that was an understood contract. That if I walk into your business, you have a contract with me that your business is safe. So if I slip and fall, you owe me money. You have to make me, set me right, make it right. They said slavery is illegal, but if a man contracts himself into being a slave, i.e. a.k.a vis-a-vis -vis concordantly a job then this court will allow it we cannot break contracts and that's what a job is it was it was understood that most people when they came into adulthood their family is supposed to offer something in trade to the rest of the community one person is a butcher one person is a baker one person is a candlestick maker one person is a carpenter right you're supposed to offer some sort of skill in trade but now we have people with zero skill you don't offer anything notice that there's not a entrepreneur course in all of the united states except for maybe california there's some some hokey guy i guess they wanted that so that they could have more silicon valley type people popping out of school but i don't think that puts out as many entrepreneurs as simply getting an engineering degree did you know that most CEOs in the United States are fresh out of college with engineering degrees and start businesses because they come up with something because they know how to make stuff. They know how to do stuff. You people with your jobs now, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, say anything about your job. I'm not trying to say anything about your lifestyle. This economy is about to crash again. What are you going to do? It would behoove you to right now go start eating ramen noodles, save every piece of scrap of dime penny money that you can have and go buy you a second home that you could rent out save all of your money live like paupers live like monks live like monks in the uh, in, in nepal in the uh in the yeah, nepal a cot nothing on a wall a book a candle that's that's your room you, you you understand what i'm saying save every possible penny this should be your sacrificing time Make the sacrifice get you an asset, an income producing asset. The easiest one that I can tell you that you can understand that we both can agree on is that you buy a piece of property that you can rent out. If you want to get sophisticated by a commercial piece, but the commercial is not a guarantee right now, right? There are plenty of commercial properties sitting vacant, but this is the era of the renter. Buy you a piece of property scrimp and save buy you a piece of property and rent it out easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> i'm being serious scrape save and for those without a job you know i, I said i said before the job is supposed to supp supply you 
with your starting cash. You're not supposed to stay there. The job is a temporary thing, right? These people screaming about minimum wage. You're not supposed to have a job for life. That money is supposed to go for saving up to start your, your life, right? I have saved up $50,000 working at McDonald's, now I'm going to buy some investment property. And I've said before, you're supposed to stay at home. You don't leave at 18. What do you have at 18? What does your child have at 18? Are you giving them a house? Are you giving them a car? Are you giving them for furnishing their entire house? No, they don't have anything at 18. What do they have? A pot to put, not a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of. They have nothing. Oh, it's, it's time for you to be on your own. Why? Says who? Have you seen this economy? 40 year olds are moving back in with their parents. Get this out of your mind. There are so many countries across the water, the Atlantic, yeah, the Atlantic that have three generations living in the same house. Why? Because living accommodations is the least of your worries. These, you're trying to stay alive. You're trying to stay afloat. You're trying to get ahead. Your family, your legacy is what you should be trying to build, not make your teenager comfortable. Well, well, he graduated from college. He should be on his. No, that's low class peasant talk that you've been handed down from the rich people. The rich people don't go anywhere. Well, they have so much room in their house. And maybe instead of you buying a, what is it? Starbucks every morning. You should have been putting on another wing onto your house. You should have been saving and put another wing. Okay. This is where. Uh, this is, uh, and in two stories, right? This is where uh, son number one goes and his family. This is where son number one, uh, two goes and his family. And we built a separate house for grandma and grandpa out in the back. But that would get rid of my rose garden. Your rose garden is more important than getting ahead in life through the generations. I want you to think generationally. And I want all, all of you, black, white, green, whatever. Think generationally. This is why I'm really, that's another reason I'm really against divorce. Divorce does absolutely nothing, nothing other than destroy your complete and utter legacy. Well, we argue so much and who cares? Grow the hell up. People argue. It's not that, well, he always, he's always doing so. She's always doing so. He leaves out the toilet seat. Okay, go buy an automatic toilet. Oh, so that problem is completely moot, completely solved. He squeezes the toothpaste, buy an, a second bar, uh, tube of toothpaste. He puts the toilet paper under instead of over. Buy another whole toilet paper dispenser and you put it on the other way. These are not life-threatening problems. And the only, only time that you should get divorced is when it's something life-threatening, that you have actually married a crazy woman or married a crazy man. These lawyers, these judges don't care about you. They care about, and, and they're in and with the government, Get as much divorce as you possibly can and keep marrying over and over and over so that we can get more money. Because who has their hand out really in that courtroom? Defense, uh, I'm not, not defense attorney, but uh, lawyer one for divorce, lawyer two for divorce, judge for divorce. And in the shadows, we have the government holding with well, his hands uh, held out too. That's what it's all about. Completely destroying everything that the two of you have built up. I should be a marriage counselor. I'd set everybody straight. And I'd come to your house and I'd be like, look, here, uh, build this right here. This over here, take that toilet out, get an automatic toilet. You get a shower, you get a bathtub. I'd set everything straight, right? <laughs> you build a deck. You build a, a, a cubby hole over here so she can just read. And you get a maid. Well, she's supposed to, well, you didn't marry such a woman. You didn't marry a woman that cooks and cleans and all this stuff. So get a maid. Both of you are going to hire a maid. And a maid is going to come do all the dishes, do all the cooking, everything for you, and then leave. Bam, your marriage is saved. The government is there to, is to destroy the marriage because they can get money out of you. Keep you in the peasantry. I always talk about peasants, 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 peasants. That's what it is. They're keeping you in the peasantry. This stuff is about to come crashing down over your heads and you all are acting like children. You are acting like, uh, what's the bird? The ostrich with the head in the sand. Oh no, the, the housing market isn't going to crash. I'm going to have my job. They are closing stores because people don't have money. They don't have jobs. Obama lied. Federal government lied. There is no 5% unemployment rate. People just have been so out of work for so long. They have stopped counting them. And this is the amount of people that they have stopped counting that 40% of the labor population has gone completely off the records. And now it's down to 5% unemployment. This thing is going to come crashing down. And even the people with the jobs 
are going to be in a hellhole right along the people without jobs. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to sound the warning bell. This is coming, whether you like it or not. I've already said, buy you some silver, buy you some gold. Do you know that several states have it in their state legislature right now that you can use gold coins as legal tender? Right now, not a joke, not a fantasy, in the legislature. This thing is going to come crashing down and the dollar is going to be nothing. At least you have these people in these states that actually care about the states and care about the citizens. For, for whatever reason they care, right? We, we never trust politicians, but for whatever reason they care. Legal tender gold coins. This thing is going to be ugly. I'm here to tell you. Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show.